Hello, so uh, I'm Michal Koutny. I work at SUSE to various security related stuff and also on systemd sometimes. So today I will do a retake of service restarts. Uh, the explanation of the title is retake like when you are shooting a movie when you take a scene again. So uh, well, uh, look, at, look at it again. Uh, so the contents of the talk today, uh, first I will introduce some theoretical model or just model so that we don't want, uh, we, so that we know what we talk about. Uh, then I will present some uh, user perspective, I mean from the users of uh, system D perspective. Uh, then some perspective of the service developers. Then the fourth point is uh, the R template uh, implementation that I've been playing with and uh, also putting it in relation to other, other work done in this area. So uh, the definitions, usually the definition in systemd is that uh, restarts is uh, just a concatenation of a stop and start of the service. So we could uh, think, well, is there any question or comment? Okay. Um, so uh, uh, it would mean it's just a syntactic sugar, uh, but uh, we will look later that uh, there is uh, more than just a concatenation of these two operations. So the stop, uh, we usually want to uh, somehow correctly terminate the processes of the service, and the start is also uh, not as simple, uh, but uh, for us here it will be just uh, forking the new processes, uh, setting up the environment, and then execute them themselves. Uh, there is also work done on that uh, currently, but uh, we will focus more on the restarting part. So the example daemon we have here um, is uh, basically just a loop uh, that uh, processes uh, data uh, as long as uh, any data are there to process. The cl client requests are usually this uh, incoming data. And uh, we also have some way to interrupt the operation of the service with a sig signal so that uh, uh, we break out of the loop and uh, clean up the operation of, uh, of the daemon. So uh, what is uh, important here that we don't just uh, arbitrarily terminate it, but we do some cleanup work. Uh, and it would be uh, accompanied by such a simple uh, unit file, uh, which is uh, just enough for this use case because of the default uh, configurations. Uh, we can also help ourselves uh, with uh, a socket unit file where the the, the file descriptor that we obtain the data from is uh, uh, configured uh, by systemd, and uh, then in our daemon we would have to uh, change our construct fd function. Uh, the important useful function is uh, the sd listen fds uh, that will give us information about the past file descriptors that we've got set up from uh, systemd. So uh, this is uh, uh, th th this is uh, the model of the daemon. Uh, so what actually happens during uh, the restart, uh, we see that uh, the, on the left-hand side is uh, the PID1 or the service manager, uh, and uh, the, there are two instances of the services, the old service and the new service, and then there is a client. Uh, here we have a variant where the, during the cleanup operation we wait uh, for the ongoing client requests so that we cannot uh, stop immediately, but uh, we have to uh, somehow uh, finish the client's request and only after that uh, uh, the old service uh, uh, terminates and uh, we start the new service. So you see there is some delay uh, because of the ongoing requests. Uh, another variant would be that uh, we uh, terminate quicker uh, by just uh, dropping the client request, not responding it. Uh, but here we could utilize uh, utilize uh, the socket created by uh, PID1, uh, so that the client, if the client notices, notices uh, the drop, uh, it would perhaps retry. And uh, even though the new service is not running yet, uh, it can. Uh, it can communicate uh, via the socket that is still handled uh, by PID1, and then PID1 passes uh, the, the socket uh, with the client requests uh, in the start environment uh, to the new service, so the new service can handle this client. So, uh, yeah, we, we, have, we had this uh, socket utilization uh, shown, uh, and uh, we, we, shortened, we shortened the gap. Uh, we didn't have to wait for the client, but uh, it's a different kind of service uh, uh, when we drop the requests. 
So that is uh, the theoretic model. So um, now, uh, why actually we want to do the restart? Uh, Typically, you would need, want to reload the configuration, which would mean reloading, configura reloading configuration of the daemon itself, if it's somehow uh, customizable, or the unit, uh, uh, definition of the unit file for the service, as it's done in, in system B. Um, so then you can, you can uh, restart the daemon because you want to uh, update the code. Uh, of course, uh, not of course. Sometimes uh, you can help yourself with live patching, but that is not always available. Uh, another instance would be some kind of infinite jobs, I would call it, uh, like uh, get TTY uh, that is respond uh, indefinitely, actually, uh, 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 respond indefinitely, or uh, restarts are a popular method of uh, problem remedy uh, for various reasons. And uh, uh, I want to um, stop at this problem remedy for a bit more because uh, there is some uh, new stuff uh, uh, in systemd uh, that I've noticed uh, has been done recently. Uh, so uh, uh, systemd supports the automatic restarts for some time already, uh, but you, and uh, there is some uh, mechanism uh, to re limit the. Uh, rate of restart so that it doesn't get stuck in a restart loop if uh, there is all, some uh, unrecoverable, unrecoverable problem. And uh, so there used to be uh, the, the default uh, pause and the rate limit, pair of rate limiting directives. Uh, and recently there is also a pair of uh, exponential back off uh, directives where you can specify the maximum interval. It, uh, uh, it, uh, the maximum interval it will try before restarting the service and also a uh, number of steps uh, before the interval is reached with the exponential back off. Back off. Uh, in the picture we can see that actually the more steps you use, the, the, the more, more tries you get uh, before you reach the high, number, the high, uh, the, the high interval. So. Uh, now, more about the stopping of the service from the user perspective. So there are uh, here are listed the directives and their default values. Uh, here I will not go through all of them, but on this slide, on this diagram, uh, I would like to explain them a bit uh, from the left side to the right side. So on the left hand side we have the signals that were described there and uh, from the top down uh, we see like a time passing. Uh, and uh, do, uh, on the right hand side, those are uh, the states of the service as uh, systemd internally tracks it and the actions that transition uh, service between the states. And uh, uh, there is the association with the actions and the configured signals. So uh, for the ex uh, uh, on the left hand side, you can see that the, uh, for example, uh, uh, hang up signal uh, is optional uh, and uh, uh, actually, hang up signal is optional, and uh, kill signal is also optional. Uh, which, uh, yeah, what I wanted to say uh, that the hang up signal is actually additional uh, on top of the uh, terminate, terminate signal. Uh, never mind. Uh, and the middle column uh, shows us w uh, what is the effect of a kill mode uh, directive. So uh, usually, in, in the first attempt, uh, we will target uh, only the main process of the of the service, and on, only in the second attempt, uh, we will uh, send the signal to all processes of the C group, uh, depending on the configuration. There is uh, one special value of this configuration, uh, which is called uh, kill mode none, which means uh, that uh, all of this is uh, skipped and uh, no no signals are actually sent. Uh, so to make this a picture uh, more readable, here's simplification for the uh, for the demo demo service I've presented previously. Uh, it only goes through uh, three states because if there is no action defined, uh, it will just uh, skip to the next available state. So when we are stopping the service, it goes from the running state, waiting for the uh, waiting for the child to terminate, and uh, then it's uh, that service inactive. So that was how we stop the service and what, what 
controls we have for that. Now, more from the perspective of the service implementations. Uh, I showed you initially that you can use uh, systemd to set up the uh, set up the sockets for you, uh, but sometimes it may not be possible. Either you want to have it set up in your service uh, on your own, based on your configuration, or it might be file scripted to some kind of object that actually cannot be uh, cannot be covered uh, by socket units. So still, uh, systemd provides you. Uh, mm, an API for this uh, called uh, FD Store. When the service before it uh, before it stops uh, in this cleanup work, it can uh, back up uh, the file descriptors inside uh, the PID one. It can tag them with a name, and uh, then when the new service starts, uh, so it can search by the associated name uh, the given file descriptor and uh, restore the state uh, for, from the old instance. And again, there are uh, some directives that we can uh, use uh, in uh, in the unit file uh, to restrict uh, to restrict the amount of data that is actually stored in uh, PID1 so i've mentioned uh, restore the state so uh, another method that is uh, uh, useful for some sm smooth restarts uh, is uh, to serialize the state uh, in the old instance and the new instance, then can pick it up and uh, start where the old service was. Uh, this requires that uh, the, the, the service is designed with that in mind. As an example, uh, we have here uh, so the service is the PID one itself, and the client is the uh, systemd run command. Uh, the systemd run command uh, is basically a request from a client that takes five seconds, and in parallel uh, we start a daemon reload of the. Sorry. So what we would see uh, is uh, important are the timestamps. Uh, so uh, this is the messages from the client uh, that uh, it got some handle uh, for a job that is uh, created in internally in PID one. Then we do the reload. This is uh, this is the reload uh, happening between, uh, during the processing of the request. Uh, we see that the system D serialized, serialized its state. Uh, the job that uh, represents the op ongoing operation uh, is serialized, and then it's, uh, it's again deserialized. So it, it can uh, continue the work, and the client uh, uh, then gets its response uh, as it expected. So uh, it's but it gets the response from the new instance. Uh, yeah, there is uh, some uh, yeah, different behavior of demon reexec, but um, I'm not going to talk about it here now. So, uh, what is actually the problem? Uh, or the problem is uh, has multiple facets. Um, as, we, as I said, uh, it's not always possible to represent uh, the internal state, uh, or uh, to, uh, the services are not always implemented with uh, this serialization from the beginning. So uh, it's, a, it's a big change for their code. Uh, second, the socket units might not be always uh, might not be always possible for the use case of the resources that the service needs. And uh, typically, this problem uh, that I present was uh, solved uh, by many services by using the kill mode none, basically t telling systemd to. Uh, take hands off uh, of the service, and uh, the processes between themselves somehow managed uh, to uh, keep running, finish the work, and the new service uh, would uh, go on with the work. So, uh, so could we somehow help here with systemd? So, first, uh, as an approximate solution, uh, we have the socket activated units. Uh, uh, so, the systemd can set up the set up the socket, uh, there is one option uh, called uh, accept yes. That means uh, that when systemd starts the service, so it actually starts service for each uh, connecting client. So here is a, a demonstration. Uh, it's used, for example, by a systemd core dump service. So I patched it so that it takes longer, and I can play with that. And if I had uh, three processes, uh, dump, uh, core dumping in parallel, uh, you could see that uh, there are actually the three instances of the service running, running in parallel. So uh, here is hmm? here is 
Uh, here is a diagram uh, of how the restart could look like uh, with a templated service. Uh, so here, the important points are that the, uh, the generation N service uh, keeps running uh, until it uh, until it handles uh, the ongoing uh, requests from the client one, while we can start the new generation one, uh, sorry, generation N plus one service uh, overlapping with the running uh, state of, uh, of the generation N. So, okay, we, are, we have overlapped services. That doesn't sound good because there is also some notion of uh, unique instances uh, of the services. And uh, that, is, uh, that, that is why we have a new uh, directive called uh, exec restart pre, uh, it's just a name, uh, but the purpose is to, uh, to release the uniquely owned resources of the old generation, uh, and whatever it means, it uh, de it's depends on the service implementation, so uh, it's uh, generic. And well, if this uh, succeeds, so only then we start the new overlapping instance. And the uh, new instance would handle requests from the from the from the from the new clients or from the new clients on. So this was this was quite theoretic. Uh, so here it's explained better in detail. So I, I've pre created a, a SSH service modified SSH service. Uh, the important points here are that uh, yeah, I've specified uh, the exec restart pre uh, as. Uh, uh, terminating the connection handling daemon and uh, and uh, the, the important change is that I've changed the file name uh, so that it looks like a template file name uh, but it uses a hash sign instead of a at sign so if I start such a service I you uh, I I will I reference to it uh, by the regular name SSH without the uh, without the special character and if I see uh, it's a state, so it shows that it's running, but actually it is uh, following a state of another service, uh, which, uh, which is a mechanism that uh, systemd already has for device units. We have uh, devices with uh, multiple alias aliases. Uh, each of them has a unit, but only one of them is the canonical one. And uh, so, so here we see uh, a started service uh, follows the state of some service instantiation. Uh, if we look at the status of this, this instance or generation. So here now it's now there is only the connection handling uh, process. But if uh, if uh, for example two clients connect, so we can see that uh, we have four more processes, uh, two processes for each client. Uh, that's because I've also used the uh, use PEMNO, so that uh, it's not they are not they are not spawned into a separate uh, PAM session, but they remain. Uh, remain in this main C group. The point here is they just represent the long-running jobs uh, or long-running requests of the requests of the service. So, uh, the, so uh, clients uh, connect uh, or client requests are being handled. Now we want to restart the service. So, if we restart the service, uh, so uh, we see that actually it's still running. And uh, it follows a different uh, generation, which is uh, which is different number, uh, different name of the generation. And uh, if we look uh, how it looks like now, uh, so we see that actually the connection handling process was terminated in the old generation. It was started as part of the uh, new generation instance, while uh, the generation the previous generation uh, still handles uh, the client connections as long as they need or as long as their as timeout is sufficient so th th this is the idea of uh, using somehow modified templates uh, for restarts of services uh, yeah so it could be used uh, also for socket activated socket activated services or for any generic uh, services that have some long long running jobs that we want to keep uh, on the site to finish them, but we also need a new instance. Uh, I was also thinking about uh, somehow extending this so that the old generation of the service could help the new generation uh, to be brought up, for example, like the root storage demons, uh, but that is quite a wild idea still. So 
So these are some extensions. Uh, here I want to also mention, because as I said, it's retake because this was uh, looked at uh, by many people before. So there was, uh, there was some experiments or it, sh it uh, helped to figure out what would be the useful what would be the useful directives that we need. Uh, so there is the libz project uh, and uh, the, these two uh, pull requests that unfortunately are not merged, but uh, they, co they cover the ideas. Uh, yeah, now I, okay, so here's the summary. I want you to remember uh, what was the demon model that what are the tunables for restarts and stoppings of the service. Uh, if you consider writing a daemon, uh, don't forget about FD store pos and possible serialization, serialization as a method to uh, get rid of some troubles. And uh, yeah, uh, the f idea for the future, whether we could use the R templates as a kill mode replacement. Um, and yeah, here are your references. Yeah, the slides, uh, those are links if you get the PDFs. And here uh, is the thank you slide uh, for the, the first is the author of the libzeder, second is uh, the author of uh, the two uh, pull requests I've mentioned, and then also thank you for the attention. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Um, if I want to use this feature to update my service to a new version of my uh, service, uh, I need to replace the binary at some point during the systemd restart command on either a hook to be able to do that or um, how can I uh, update the file system with a new version of my binary to mm -hmm. in the middle? So th that would be similar to the current, uh, uh, current behavior when the old binary is running then you install it and when you restart so the new process loads the new binary so like it doesn't need any interaction that is the same as with restarts as they are today. Any other questions? Yes. So how far is uh, general user land with this? Let's say if I have a laptop with a graphical session and I want to soft restart it, like? Uh, yeah, so soft restart, okay. Uh, so how far? Currently it's just a branch on GitHub. Uh, there's one note, second note that uh, there will be another talk about soft reboots, which is uh, something else. Uh, and uh, yeah, the idea also here was that it should not be that far away if it's implemented because ideally it should mean just renaming the unit file and uh, dropping the kill mode none. More questions? Hi, I'm interested in the FD store feature in the Kubernetes uh, context. I wonder if you know any initiative or people who are interested in do that outside of systemd, but for Kubernetes. Mm, so I, I'm not aware of any FD store initiative, uh, but I, I think it just should be advertised that it exists. And uh, all the documentation of FD store is not great, and yes, we should improve it a lot. Um, other questions? Yes. So one uh, issue that came up in the uh, one of the other PRs that you mentioned is how to deal with resource allocation. Um, how do you envision, um, well, uh, I don't know, like uh, memory assignments and disk throughput assignments and, and other stuff in those restarts when you have multiple overlapping instances? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so currently, since it uh, is based on uh, templates, so it, uh, all the instances are under one slice, and they are just uh, treated equally. Uh, and as you see, I've chosen meaningless names for the generation, so there is no notion of an active or uh, major generation. Uh, so my idea would be to somehow distinguish the active generation and major generations, and perhaps uh, specify different resources for them. but. Uh, it's, uh, I haven't thought through that. Okay, we are out of time now. Uh, I have strong opinions on this stuff, as you might have seen on this PR, but we take it offline. Uh, let, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.